When Kid and his crew were first completely annihilated by the red-haired pirates, it seemed as though that might be it for them in the story. However, as time has gone on, it has become apparent that this was simply an extreme misdirection by Oda, as all signs point to Kid actually making a huge return and being a far more significant character than most readers ever realized. There was, in fact, a plan for this character from the beginning, and the plan required him to lose here at the start of Elbath, specifically to Shanks, to start a path of growth and redemption. Because if you break down all the foreshadowing, dialogue, and thematic messaging surrounding Kid from his very introduction in the story, you can see that it always led to this point in this arc as the trigger for change. Oda, in fact, planted a very specific way for Kid to guaranteed survive this battle, a very specific character arc for him to grow in the Elbaf arc, and a very specific thematic purpose, not just for Elbaf, but to frame Luffy's story in general. And most importantly, all of this points to a likely resurgence of a far stronger, changed man at the end of Elbaf, one that readers may actually love and resonate with, who will have a far greater role in the final conflict of One Piece than you realize. But before we get into it, this spooky season, you can get Onigashima, Hachinosu, and Thriller Bark as travel posters for your walls. And in case you missed it, every month we are bringing the entire world of One Piece to life, island by island, with new batches being released every month. Each poster is hand cut by the artist himself. So if you want to get this Halloween trio of islands, they are only available this month of October and then never again. But the best part is, with your bundle of posters, you get an invite to join me live on stream to discuss any One Piece topic that you want. And share your One Piece ideas in front of thousands of viewers. We had a ton of success and a lot of fun launching this just last month. Plus, you'll also be able to join me in a smaller, more private group setting happy hour that I'll be hosting online once a month. Plus, you'll get a 20% discount on all other items in the Mord store and a hand-drawn Brook bookmark, a Brookmark, thrown in for free. And finally, with each poster comes a code. The first person to solve the code wins the Great Pirate Race and wins the Grand Mystery Prize, along with being featured as the winner on the channel. This code still has not not been solved, so if you think you can be the first person to crack the code, get your bundle today. You get all of that bundled together with your travel posters. And again, this trio of posters are only going to be printed and produced this month of October and this month only. So hit the link in the description below to get your bundle today. Grab this collection before it's gone. So to begin with, why should we even believe that Kid's story isn't over? Well, as the final saga has begun, it has become very apparent that Oda has actually always had significant plans for literally all of the long-time notable side characters in One Piece, as Egghead was an arc wherein Oda suddenly began to focus in on the side characters across the globe, and began to reveal the major character arcs and story roles that he had in mind for all of them all along. As we saw across the board, the storylines for Kobe, Aokiji, Garp, Sabo, Vivi, Kuma, Kizaru, Buggy, and many others suddenly begin to take center stage in the narrative. This was by far the most significant arc for One Piece's side characters, setting them all up for major character storylines in One Piece's final saga, and most importantly, none of these storylines came out of thin air. Rather, they all reflected extreme long-term planning and thought that had been put into where these characters' arcs would be going, and the roles that they would be playing, from long, long back in the narrative. In Egghead Island, literally decades of pre-planning became very evident for One Piece's side characters. If you look back through the arc, every single long-running side character that has consistently been a staple of One Piece's overarching narrative was revealed to have had some important storyline that Oda had been saving for them in the final saga. That is, all of them, seemingly except for Kid. Kid suddenly seems to stand out as the only exception, whose story seems to have hit an abrupt end after so much build-up with Oda seemingly not having any final narrative planned for him. As such, if this truly is the end for Kid, that would mean that in the entirety of One Piece's 1100 chapters, Kid is the one and only one of Oda's long-running side characters that Oda for some reason genuinely never had a plan for in the final saga. I find it highly unlikely that Kid is just this random exception to Oda's meticulous planning. Especially considering just one arc back, Oda made Kid start getting a bigger and bigger role in the story with the Wano arc. And it becomes even more unlikely considering that Law is clearly still in the narrative and still has an important direction and plan for his story, and Oda stated that he always had a more extensive plan in mind for Kid from the beginning than he ever did for Law. Now, I've heard some people argue that Kid's only purpose is to exist as a failed version of Luffy, and that's why he was always destined to be eliminated immediately and abruptly in the final saga, with no further story in mind. But while there is definitely some merit to that concept, as I myself have talked about in previous videos, there are certain major missing pieces to that line of storytelling that make it unlikely that Kid's only role was to be a consistent punching bag to keep highlighting how much better Luffy is, as I expand upon in this video. But more importantly, while the purpose of Kid is definitely to contrast with Luffy in many ways, all signs point to to the real meat of that thematic contrast being deeper. 
as it's something most readers don't seem to realize and goes to the crux of Kid's likely redemption arc. But before we can dig into that, I need to first establish three major clues to Kid's return and significant planned role in Elbaf that most readers are also missing. First is that Oda very deliberately gave Kid an elaborately planned out to his seeming death. See, Kid is a devil fruit user who sunk into the ocean. His whole crew just got decimated and was also sunk into the ocean. Oda is giving us every reason to believe that Kid and his crew are done for, right? Except that's not true, because Oda planted a surprisingly obvious out. Because Kid's defeat took place at Elbath, and Elbath is very specifically the one island whose citizens owe Kid a great debt. Because the one thing that was established to us about Elbaf in great detail was that Elbaf's giants have one singular hated mortal enemy, Big Mom. There was, in fact, an entire backstory devoted to establishing the hatred between Big Mom and the Giants. And Big Mom, the greatest enemy and terror of the Giants, has actually just been defeated by none other than Captain Kidd. We have seen time and again that when the Straw Hats do a favor to a nation in advance, that nation's citizens return that debt as soon as the Straw Hats arrive. That's why the Straw Hats were welcomed at Fishman Island as honored guests after saving Shirahoshi's shark. That's why they were welcomed at Zoe after having defeated Doflamingo. So in this case, Oda played up this huge conflict between Big Mom and the Elbaf Giants, which seemingly never ended up being relevant in the actual plot, except it turns out, yes, it was going to be relevant all along, because it was necessary for Kid's story in Elbaf. Establishing Big Mom as the Giant's enemy, who is then defeated by Kid, establishes a reason for why the Giants would then save Kid in his greatest hour of need, when he sinks to the bottom of the ocean floor at their doorstep. It also potentially provides a connection between Kid and the Giants as the arc progresses. Now you might argue that the Elbaf Giants, Dory and Brogy, are the ones who sunk the Kid Pirates in the first place, but they only did that as a favor to Shanks and it actually makes sense for them specifically because Big Mom actually has no connection to Dory and Brogy. Since remember, Elbaf's conflict with Big Mom came decades after Dory and Brogy had left the island and were busy with their duel. Dory and Brogy have no reason to care about Kid, but as for the rest of the Giants of Elbaf, of course they would fish out Kid and his crew from the bottom of the ocean floor after the battle. It would honestly be extremely out of character for any honorable One Piece nation to not do so, considering such a big deal was made of the long-standing enmity between the Elbaf Giants and Big Mom. And so Oda secretly planted this specific out for Kid and his crew from way back. Yes, they were defeated and seemingly drowned, but they were specifically defeated and drowned at the shores of a nation that was set up to be greatly indebted to them. It is likely we will find the Kid Pirates at the start of the Elbaf arc, beaten and broken, but still very much alive, having been fished out by the Giants. The second major clue that Kid is set for a comeback is the remarkable similarity of this defeat to the Straw Hat Sabote defeat. While the Straw Hat crew was completely decimated and humbled, this defeat was the spark for the greatest period of growth for them ever. And most importantly, it was the trigger for the most important arc of character development for Luffy. He came out of the Sabote incident a changed man. This annihilation of the Kid Pirates parallels the Straw Hat's defeat so much, likely because the point is to trigger a similar arc of growth for Kid. And finally, the most notable point of likelihood that this storyline is significant for Kid is the simple fact that Kid's arc seems to have always been planned to be tied to a Shanks-centric arc. For example, if you look at Law, we can see clear hints that from Law's introduction, Oda was always planning Law's storyline to be tied to Doflamingo. And what you know, Dressrosa, the Doflamingo-centric arc, was also Law's primary arc. And that's particularly interesting when you consider that from the start, Oda said that he had less of a plan for Law initially than he did for Kid. So whatever Oda initially had planned out for Law from his introduction with his storyline with Doflamingo, we know that Oda had something even more fleshed out planned for Kid. Now, all early signs point to Kid's planned storyline always having been tied to Shanks. That is the Yonko that Kid had been intending to take down from the get-go, that's the one who took Kid's arm in the past, but it actually goes deeper than that. Kid's literal character design seems to have been based around making him a twisted version of Shanks. Shanks' iconic trait is his red hair, and Kid is the only other red-haired pirate. Shanks' other signature characteristic is that he is a one-armed man, and Kid is also the only other one-armed pirate. It's actually pretty f***ing on the nose that Kid is kind of designed like a bizarro version of Shanks, another red-haired one-armed pirate with the exact opposite defining philosophy to Shanks. And this is the major writing piece that most readers seem to miss. In Chapter 1, the single most important trait that was established about Shanks is that he does not mind others laughing at him or mocking him. 
Shanks understands that some things aren't worth fighting over. This was the same powerful lesson that Shanks passed on to Luffy, that there is no point in getting into fights simply because others laugh at you. Now, Kid is very specifically introduced to us as having the exact opposite philosophy to Luffy and Shanks. Whereas Luffy learned from Shanks that it's never worth fighting just because someone laughed at your dream, Kid is infamous for having killed people left and right specifically for laughing at his dream. This is the real contrast between Luffy and Kid that was at the core of their character dynamic. Their initial striking similarity was that Kid was the first rival upcoming pirate Luffy ever met who had the same level of guts and ambition to open claimed that he would find the One Piece, as both Luffy and Kid fundamentally understood that only those with the guts to be able to proudly proclaim their ambition to the world could ever have what it takes to actually achieve it. But the striking point of difference between the two was that Luffy understood something one step beyond Kid. Luffy understood what he had learned from Shanks, which is that it does not matter if others laugh at you for declaring your dream. Your own confidence in your dream is all that matters. That's what gives it weight. Whereas Kid never learned that lesson. Kid refuses to allow anyone to laugh at his dream or look down on him, and he stoops to petty violence each time. This violent streak interestingly actually seemed to originally put Kid ahead of Luffy in the Supernova rankings. But the question is, who will actually finish ahead in the end? Who is truly walking the path of the strong? And so herein lies the true potential for Kid's character that was being written in and planted from his introduction. Kid has the same ambitions and guts as Luffy, but he lacks all the nuance, wisdom, and morality of Shanks. Kid lacks those crucial elements that Luffy learned from Shanks that make Luffy a far better man than Kid. If Luffy had never met Shanks, Luffy may very well have grown up to be hot-headed and violent himself, starting fights for no reason, because as Luffy once believed, willingness to fight is what makes one a man. This is the real difference between the two characters, and the entire point is that the contrast between Kid and Luffy really goes back to the contrast between Kid and Shanks, as Shanks is the one who preached Luffy's philosophy in the first place. And that's precisely why from the beginning, Kid's primary character storyline was seemingly planned for a Shanks-centric arc. That's why Kid was designed from the beginning as a bizarro version of Shanks, another red-haired, one-armed pirate defined by violence while Shanks is defined by only fighting to protect. A lot of readers seem to think that Kid's concept is basically just, well, Kid is Luffy if Luffy didn't train for two years, which, while technically true, has little to no thematic meaning. The actual point of Kid is that Kid is Luffy if Luffy never met Shanks. That's why Kid was created with a future Shanks-centric storyline in mind from the start. Because in the arc that Luffy and Shanks finally have their storyline, Oda conceived this character Kid as the perfect foil for that arc to help bring out the themes of that storyline. That's also largely why I believe Kid was so underdeveloped in Wano, something that I'll be critiquing more in depth in the upcoming Wano video, which is still coming. But ultimately, I do believe that when Oda first conceived Kid, he had a character arc planned for him with the future Shanks-centric storyline in mind. And maybe Oda didn't fully think out the details of how to develop Kid's character in the arcs prior to that. That is speculative, of course, but I think a large reason that Law's writing seems so good in comparison to Kid's, so far, is the point in time that Oda planned their respective character development for. Dressrosa, Doflamingo's storyline, comes a lot earlier than Elbaf, Shanks' storyline. This is a concept I elaborate on in my weekly podcast, which you can get by supporting me on Patreon. Link in the description below. But that aside, the main question is, what would Kid's arc in Elbaf itself look like, with all of that being said? Well, we can break down the potential for his character, the potential for his growth and strength, and finally the potential for the growth of his crew. So as I mentioned earlier, the real difference between Kid and Luffy seems to come down to the moral teachings that Luffy has learned in comparison to Kid, which is again why Shanks being in this arc is so essential to tying those ideas together. Kid, if he is to grow, will likely need to have some sort of changes in perspective. His wanton acts of violence are the biggest thing that separates him from the path that Luffy and Shanks walk. Now, Kid's path to picking himself back up and learning something in the process does have potential to be an emotionally powerful one, as one way in which Kid is most certainly similar to Luffy is that Kid is also defined by being able to keep getting back up every time he is crushed. No matter what villains do to Luffy, no matter how many times Luffy is beaten and broken, he is always able to push himself to get up and keep going. Kid has the potential to be similar. He's had his arm cut off, been beaten by Yonko after Yonko, been imprisoned, been tortured, and he always keeps going. 
Even now, with his entire crew seemingly decimated, Kid will likely be able to pick himself back up and keep going yet again. Because the reality is that this is nothing new for Kid and the Kid Pirates. If Luffy's rubber power symbolizes that Luffy always bounces back, Kid's power symbolizes that he always reassembles no matter how many times he is reduced to scrap. There is a strong character arc for Kid in there somewhere. Oda just now needs to finally give us a reason to actually like and care about this character. Perhaps by learning from the moral philosophies of others. And while many have criticized Kid for constantly getting L's and never really being close to Luffy in strength, I feel as though part of this reflects that Kid doesn't really deserve to be in Luffy's tier of strength until he grows as a character. Because there is one very, very simple way for Oda to make Kid a lot stronger, which is that Kid is a Conqueror's Hockey user, and the most powerful upgrade in the story is learning how to use Advanced Conqueror's Hockey. Oda just hasn't allowed Kid to make that leap yet. However, most would agree that Kid at this point in the story is at the very least on the level of Yonko First Mates. If Kid is already that strong, then getting that massive upgrade of Advanced Conqueror's Hockey would put him right up there with the top tiers. Remember, Kid right now is at least as strong as Luffy was in Act 1 of Wano, and Luffy jumped from that level to Yonko level when he unlocked Advanced Conqueror's Hockey. So say what you will about Kid's L's, but the fact is, Kid is one major power-up away from being among the top tiers. Kid just has to earn it first as a character. And finally, as for Kid's crew, well, this last point is, heavy caveats, extremely speculative. But fun to discuss. I think there may be one more alliance in store for Kid. A familiar alliance, in fact. Because even if Kid himself gets a massive power upgrade, his crew is too weak. Killer is the only notable fighter. And conveniently, Trafalgar Law just lost his own crew and is traveling right now as a free agent. I believe the reason Oda had Kid and Law take down Big Mom together could very well have been a sort of soft setup for a more permanent alliance between the two in the future. While Law would never work under Kid, of course, I believe a cross-guild situation is possible. Because if you consider what this does narratively, Kid and Law are the last two big-name pirates on the ocean who have Yonko-level bounties even though they aren't Yonko themselves. And neither of their crews are a Yonko-level force independently. Law allying with the Kid pirates officially would allow them to consolidate as one final major faction on the seas. Remember, both Kid and Law have both been okay working together when they begrudgingly realize it's necessary. And this would be the next necessary step for both groups if they want to continue on and survive into the final war, as it was definitively shown that neither group is independently capable of surviving on their own. On top of this, geographically, Elbaf is very likely the closest island to Law right now. It was in the middle of the three islands that they could have gone to, which seems like a deliberate decision by Oda. Just as the Strahds are being directed to Elbaf right now, so too are Law and Beppo likely on the way there as well, simply due to proximity. It also makes sense for both Kid and Law's goals, as they both want to get to Laugh Tale. But Kid specifically wants the One Piece, whereas Law just wants to learn the meaning of the Will of D, so there is no conflict of interest. I acknowledge that this may have been the most fanfiction segment of the video, but it's an interesting thought that would consolidate plot lines that I thought would be worth sharing, and would explain the erasure of Law's crew despite Law seemingly remaining as a relevant character. And of course, it provides an avenue for Kid and Law to continue to be a force in the narrative. But ultimately, the actual character arc for Kid is what matters here, and from his very introduction, it was likely planned for this storyline in Elbaf, the storyline where Luffy and Shanks will also meet, as Kid himself was conceived to contrast their specific philosophies. So let me know in the comments below if you believe in the return and redemption of Kid, and if you enjoyed this video then definitely like and subscribe. And if you want to get my extended thoughts on why Law's writing turned out so much better than Kid's so far, you can listen to my weekly podcast by supporting me on Patreon, link in the description below. Thank <laughs> you.